So when I was considering space efficiency for the design of this workshop, I decided that the stationary power tools like table saw, jointer, and planer, stuff that you need to get all the way around, would take up that first stall of this two car garage. And then I have this pegboard wall, and behind it I have machines that you can use while they're against a wall. In the back there is my ornamental milling machine, and then right up close here is the lathe. Now I moved to the shop about a year and a half ago, and I never did set up this lathe. This lathe looks like it's really brand new, but it's not. I actually refurbished it just like I did my planer, if you've seen that video. And now I want to mount it to this bench, because right now it's just loose on here. Now my first order of business is to screw the lathe down to the bench. And so I want to get it placed kind of centered on here, and then also I'm going to put it three inches from the front, and I'm doing that with a combination square. I decided three inches was a good number to be able to set down a chisel or a gouge or something but still I can get close enough to properly use the machine. I can't drill straight, so I'm just going to start it. Then I can take my motor off, slide it off the end of the workbench, and finish out each of the holes. So I grabbed my motor, the belt, and a hinge, a nice big door hinge, and I was just playing around with what geometry I thought felt about right. And I figured out that with a 13 inch board, it put the motor approximately level with the output shaft, and that seemed pretty good in terms of if I switch the belt to different pulleys. It seems like it's going to work right I want to get my pivoting so, axis as close to that as possible, so I'm going to leave it just about a quarter inch to that edge. Now the part of the screws that stick over are going to get cut off with my Dremel tool. Because this motor is going to see vibration, I'm going to double nut it, put the second nut on here and lock it together. That'll never come loose now. Okay, that appears to work just fine. I can put the belt in different positions and it'll give me different speeds on my lathe. Now I just need to wire in a switch. I've got a stranded wire from an old piece of a junk something or other that I'm using to plug into the wall. And then it's coming into the switch and I have a solid Romex wire after that. Well the Romex I can just put under the screws like normal, but you're not really supposed to put stranded wire under a screw. Instead, I'm going to put this fork terminal on, which looks like this. I'm going to crimp that onto the wire and then I can take it and put it under here. And that's going to be a much more secure joint, and it's made for stranded wire. Ah, feel better already. So here's what I thought would be my finished mechanism, but I have a bit of a problem. As soon as I fired this up, it was evident. That's a lot of vibration. You may not be able to see it too well on the camera, but it's shaking the lathe, it's shaking the whole bench. Uh, not only is the motor bouncing in and out, it's actually bouncing axially to the shaft. So I thought about this overnight and came out here with a fresh pair of eyes. And uh, it's, it's apparent that when I think about it, that a door hinge is just not rigid enough. Not only does it bounce this way, but it allows it to bounce axially. And the farther up this goes, the worse it is because you're further away from the hinge. Um, now I could move this lower down, but then I'm not getting enough movement to get the tension I need. Uh, the other problem I have with this is the motor just isn't heavy enough to give me enough tension on this belt. You can see with my one finger I can lift this whole assembly up pretty easily. Um, and I'm going to go back to mounting the motor right onto the table to give me more rigidity. And I'm going to go back to having some kind of a tensioning mechanism. So here we go again. Well, the good news is it's a lot easier to mount the motor without the mechanism. I just line up the belts, and when the motor's in the right spot, I use a sharpie and mark the holes. Then I can take the motor off and drill those holes. And I'll set the motor in place and reach underneath where the drawer is 
to bolt the motor down. So now I'm just playing around with a few pieces of scrap wood. And when I had this lathe set up in my old shop, I also used a idler to tension it. Now I got this idler a number of years ago at Farm and Fleet. It has a 5 8 hole. And I discovered that if I use a 5 8 by 4 inch long bolt, it gives me enough room to slide the idler back and forth to get to all these four ratios of the belt. And also the threads are such that I can run a nut all the way on, put a three quarter inch sheet of plywood in between and have a nut on the outside and it makes kind of a rigid assembly. So now I'm going to take this assembly and kind of play with what dimensions look good and just sort of figure it out. And it looks like something like that. I'll put a hole here and then I'll use a spring to sort of hold this up. And uh, after I get it like how I like it, I'll kind of carve this to make it look a little prettier. Now another note about when you're setting up an idler on any belt unit, uh, if you take this to a free body diagram, you'll quickly realize that there's a force vector going from the belt from this pulley to this pulley. So when this, this motor is driving, there's a force vector straight on. That's why I want my idler on the top side. If I had my idler down here, suddenly the force has to go down through the idler and over, and that adds a significant component of force in this direction that you have to account for when mounting your idler. So by mounting it up here, I'm on the relief side and I can spring tension it and it should be fine. So I got this marked out in place of where I want the pivot point that's right here. I want the pivot point to be more towards the top of this arm so that when there's a moment of trying to put a twist in the board, it compresses down here and pulls tension on my pivot point. For the actual pivot point, I'm going to put a stud in made of a 3 8 by 2 inch long coarse thread bolt. And I'll show you how that's done. First, I'm going to drill 5 16 for the 3 8 bolt. That's generally the tap size if you look on the chart. So I'm just going to drill through. Go nice and deep, you don't want to bottom off. Now with that off of there, I can take my 3 8 bolt and my same drill and use it as a tap. Now that hole that I made in my pivoting arm, I'll wallow it out to 3 8 And my whole point here is to have this pivot on the shank part of the bolt, not the threaded part. So if that goes in, you can see I have just threads hanging out below, and it's going to pivot on the shank. And just adjust it until you get it to pivot. Oh, that's just about right. Okay. Now i got some pocket holes I drilled into here. So I'm going to kind of line this up. Happy with its position. I'm just going to run my pocket holes in. Now I'm a little afraid that pocket holes alone aren't enough to stabilize this uh, tensioner bracket that I made. So I've created this coped piece of plywood. You can see I kind of coped it out there about the radius of the motor. I'm going to stick this in here like this. Sorry about bumping you. Then I should be able to hammer it in. And a couple of screws will lock that spacer in place. And here's the final product. I put the bowl head on here just for show. That's a higher speed. Not much vibration. Holding up pretty good. Now I got the belt switched over. And this is low speed. Nice and steady. This is going to be great. That seems like it cuts pretty good and it's pretty good vibration too. I'm really pleased with this. Sometimes you just got to design something twice and start over if it doesn't work the first time and that's what I did here and it worked out. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Craftsman David. Please subscribe so you'll be notified when I put out future videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.